In this webinar, we will be creating quizzes for descriptive statistics using several key commands from packages such as grading tools and student statistics. In particular, we'll be using the quiz command to generate questions which ask students to find things like the mean and the median, uh, the standard deviation, as, as well as interactively finding the interquartile range using a plot. So uh, th this, this webinar in particular is going to be a little bit more programmatic in nature. So I'll be showing you some, some tips and techniques for creating quiz commands. Uh, and of course, once we're done, you can download this worksheet in order to step through some of these problems on your own. Uh, now you'll notice right away that I've moved Maple into its uh, worksheet mode. So I'm actually using one of our red prompts and I'll be using our, our 1D math just to make my code very clear and concise. So the first thing I want to show you is I want to start by going through and initializing some data for us to work with today. So I'm just going to call this here, initialize data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by declaring a procedure in Maple. And of course, if you have any questions about any of the commands that I use during this demo, you can just look in the Maple search box up here in order to find more details about those. All right. So the point of my procedure that I'm going to be writing here is going to be to return to us a vector of values. And as I'm stepping through, uh, one important command here to note is randomize. This way we use a new seed every single time we generate a new question. So that way we have randomly generated values all the time. So let's, let's now declare our data. And we'll declare our data to be a row vector of size 5. We'll just keep it very simple today. And we're going to seed our row vector with random values taken from values 1 to 10. And that's the second argument here, this rand 1 to 10. So next, we will use the grading quiz command to set values in our questions. So this, this requires a special syntax. So we're going to use this dollar sign data is equal to data. So that way, we are shipping. Our, our data off to the grading quiz command later on. And we'll just return data from this procedure. So that way the default return is just the data itself. And then we'll just end this proc. So to show you what, what this proc will actually do, is if I just call this on its own, it'll return a vector, as we saw before, of five randomly generated values. So on to the next part. So now we've, we've declared our, our, uh, our data procedure. So now I'm going to set up a question for finding the mean. So let's call this question, we'll call it grade mean. And we'll just defer this as being a procedure. In this case, I'm just going to short, use a little bit of shorthand notation. I'm going to say this is going to use grading quiz. So that way I don't have to type it in full later on when I'm using it during the question. So now what I'm actually looking to do is, is this grade mean procedure is going to be used to actually grade my question. So what I have to do then in, in the main body of my question is determine if something is true or false or, or grade something objectively. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this eval, B, eval boolean basically to, ret to return a true false or kind of a 0, 1 uh, value for us. And then what I'll do is I'll do use a command from student statistics. And we saw this, was, this question was going to be about the mean. So we're going to be asking the students to find the mean of a randomly generated set of five numbers. And then we're going to compare that with the known value. All right. So I'm first going to evaluate the value from the actual value. So this is the student statistics mean value from the data. And then we're going to get a response from the student themselves. And we call that response 
just response. Okay, and then we ended off this procedure. So this, this is what we call our grading procedure. So now to set up our actual grading question, we'll use the quiz command. So the, the question I'm going to be asking is, what is the mean of the following sample? And then I'll give the sample of dollar sign data. And I'm going to call the grade mean procedure because so, so the first argument of the grading quiz command is the question you're going to ask. Uh, the second one is the known answer. So if, it, if we change this question somewhat, it could be the question could be what is 1 plus 1 as the first argument here. And the second argument here will be the known true answer, which is 2. So in the last part here is also to call out and initialize any data that we require for this. So I'll now run this command. And when we run this command, we get a fully formed question. So now we have a fully formed question with a randomly generated number sequence here. So here the question is, what is the mean of the following sample? Here is our sample. And here you can see we can actually fill in a value down here in this box. And we can have that determined if it was true or false. So in this case, to find the mean, we would just as we know from, from our elementary stats course, we would add, add all these up. So 10 plus 7, 17 is 23, plus 4 is 27. So the mean of this sample is going to be 27 over 5. So we can check our answer, find that that's true. And of course, we can use this try another button in order to generate another training example. So you can basically see that using this, this procedure, we can actually generate as many training examples as we'd like. And of course, now that you've generated the question, if you take this and open up a new Maple worksheet, copy this in and save that, save this to my desktop, my mean question. Now we've got a fully formed question that you can then share with your students. And if they've got the Maple player or if they've got Maple at home, they can, of course, interact with this question and use this as a training resource. All right, so let's go on. We'll do a couple more examples. So the next example I want to show you is uh, testing for the median. So I'll just type in median here. Let me just move down this page a little bit just so we can see a bit more. Okay, so now for the median, we have to make up a new grading routine. So we're going to call this one grade median. And this is going to look a lot like our one for grade mean. So, so much so we can actually just borrow all of this code here, copy this down, and instead, in this case, we're going to use grading quiz again and evaluate B here, student statistics, and let's just add in a D and an I. So we'll do evaluate the median and get data response and leave all this alone. All right, so now let's generate our question. So again, we can borrow some from before. So we'll just take this here. So what is the median of the following sample? And again, we're gonna use the dollar sign data, and we just have to switch this to call to the grade median procedure, and we'll run that. So now what is the median of the following sample? So now we've got all these terms, and of course we've got the entry box, so we can enter a value in, check the answer, and so on. So of course, try another, let's just vary these questions. All right, so we'll do, we'll do one more example of, of this kind. And this will be the standard deviation. All right. And same as before, let me just borrow some of our code from before, and we'll just modify this ever so slightly. We'll call this grade standard deviation. And just some shortcuts. I'm just going to 
move things around here. So now we're going to use the student's uh, statistics standard deviation command. In the same way, we'll be grading this. And let's generate another quiz by borrowing this code here. And what is the standard deviation? And we'll do grade of standard deviation. And here we've generated another similar example where we can ask students to compute the standard deviation of the following sample and check their answer. Now if we'd like, we can also, at this point, I'll, I'll just show you again how we can compute this just using some commands. So I'll just cheat in order to put the answer in here. So since we've got this, this is our data here. So we'll just type in these values. So three, five, one, nine, Nine. We'll have student statistics do the work for us, and this is the resulting value here, which we can copy in up here, check our answer, and determine that that's correct. So the last example I want to show you is a little bit different than the first three, and uh, it, it's a little bit different in that I'm actually going to uh, grade a plot rather than grading just a simple question. So to do so, I'm going to write a slightly different routine this time to judge the interquartile range. All right, so I'm going to call this one init plot this time. And uh, so this is going to follow a similar path to what we did before, that. I'm going to start by initializing kind of data or initializing a plot in this case. Then I'm going to write my grading routine, followed thereafter by a call to my quiz command, which will generate the collection of components for us to use. All right, so let's go down here. And let's now generate this procedure. So we'll start off here. I'm going to use a couple of local variables. We'll call data and we'll call this one plot just for fun. So we saw before we have to use the randomize command in order to ensure that we have random data. And then we'll use, as we saw before, the, uh, the same data is equal to a, a vector, a row vector of size 5 using values from 1 to 10. Okay. Now I'm going to go up and I'm just going to borrow a couple more lines from up here. I'm just going to return, I'm just going to borrow the same set data because we still need to set our data for, for, this, for this example. So again, we're just going to use the grading quiz set dollar sign data is equal to data. And now let's set a plot as well. So we're going to use student statistics interquartile range of our data, as we saw before. And in this case, we're going to specify output equal to plot. So that way we return a plot for our interquartile range plot. And now we'll, again, borrow some code from above. And we'll assign this dollar sign plot. It's going to be equal to plot. So this is just so we can return a plot. And in this case, we don't need to return anything from this procedure. So I'll just return no and proc. Okay, so that's that's our initialization for the plot as well as the data. So we've actually combined two things into one. So we can actually, we can actually combine data collection as well as generating a plot into this one procedure here. So now, Let's set up our questions. So we'll call this one grade interquartile range, and I'll just shorten that a little bit. Write another proc here. And again, this one's going to, we can again go up here, we'll just borrow some code from up here. So we're gonna use grading quiz, and then we're gonna evaluate um, the student statistics interquartile range value for this 
data. So this is going to find the value, the same way we did here, where we were cheating and trying to find the value for student standard deviation. We're going to evaluate the value for student statistics interqual child range on our data. And this is going to also be compared against the response box. So this dollar sign response here corresponds to this box we see right here. So that's the end of our grading procedure. And now let's generate our quiz command. So grading quiz. So, and let's just type this one out. So using the following plot, the following graph, we'll say, calculate the interquartile range. And now before we said calculate the, uh, the mean or the median using a data set, in this case, we're gonna use a plot. So that way we show a plot. Okay, then we give it our grading routine. So the rate grading routine here is grade interquartile range. Then we have to initialize our plot or initialize the data as we did before. And I'm gonna give this one one more special option. And this one's gonna be plot size is equal to 400 by 400. So that way I control the actual size of that default plot, just so we can make it a little bit bigger. All right, and once we hit enter, this is what's returned to us. So this is our interquartile range question. So now we are given a plot. So using the following graph, calculate the interquartile range. So by looking at this, we can see the third quartile, the first quartile, and in green here is the interquartile range. So now as a student, I can come down here, answer this question. In this case, it's gonna be three minus one, or in this case, six minus four. Check our answer and find that correct. Again, we can click try another, try another problem, and calculate another interquartile range. The key commands, as mentioned before, to know from this, this demo, uh, include grading, quiz, student statistics mean, uh, median, standard deviation, interquartile range, and, and a couple more. And if, if you do have any more questions, or you'd like to see a little bit more about each one of these terms, uh, search our help. Uh, in particular, look for quiz examples, You'll find that if you search for quiz here, and if you look at this example worksheet, it's got a lot of really good examples on how you can generate uh, both examples with random values as well as algorithmic and procedural different types of questions.